friends in the last lecture we have discussed the different tribesmen and the areas where they are found i am dr anand vardhan a faculty at school of heritage research and management ambedkar university delhi i will discuss in this lecture the history and significance of social formation of indian tribes i mean to say how different culture groups emerge in india and how their identities have been significant we are going to discuss how tribal communities evolved and formed distinct distinct identities in our country the basic idea is all about our perception of such communities that have a specific mode of production and livelihood the formation of identity is essentially a question of perception by the other our identity lies in a manner in which we are perceived by others this implies when applied to tribes that the formation of tribal identity is dependent upon their perception by the non tribal i mean other communities the issue of the formation of tribal identity therefore involves mainly three questions what is the process through which tribes are formed what are the constitutive elements which shape the identity formation of the tribes and what is the relationship between the tribes and the mainstream civilization in other words what are the significant marker which distinguish the tribal identity from the mainstream civilizational zones in this section we will focus on these basic questions related to formation of tribal societies so friends tribal identity is basically all about ethnic identity it is all about our perception about a particular social group known for its distinct cultural and linguistic ideas and values this means that ethnic homogeneity along with other factors characterizes a tribe i mean to say that homogeneity is the basic principle for calling a community a tribe tribe represents a historical continuity and exclusiveness in cultural behavior groups which had been living together without losing or diluting their specific cultural characteristics were identified or are identified as tribes the formation of the tribal identity as indeed that of tribes was a product of economic ecological and technological isolation in other words human groups of a similar ethnicity which remained isolated than the rest of the world through geography or the use of a specific primitive technology or through economic specificity were formed into a tribe and came to acquire a tribal identity before we take up the other question it is important to remember that tribes are a distinct category at two levels the first level of demarcation is with the civilizational zones or the mainstream culture but tribes can also be distinguished from each other on the basis of different other classifications the 400 indian tribes covering a population of about 50 million people are different not only from the tribal universe but also within themselves you may find that there are distinct traits of socio cultural behavior there can be many parameters for classifying tribes and distinguishing one from other the administrative constitutional classification is based on the criteria of educational 
attainment and economic and social status of different social groups. Likewise, anthropologists would ask to classify on the basis of the mode of production, extent of distance from mainstream civilization, their geographical spread, their distinct language, their exclusive ethnic cultural roots, their religion, their kinship network and undoubtedly their occupational structure. It is on the basis of either of the above criteria that a tribe can be distinguished from the other. For instance, N. K. Bosch, a prominent scholar, divides various tribal societies into hunters and food gatherers, animal herders, persons following sifting cultivation and settled agriculture. Similarly, other divisions can be made on ecological, social, linguistic or religious basis. It is therefore important to remember that the tribal identity does not preclude the existence of various other identities within. The tribal universe is a plural universe and one tribe can be as different from the other tribe as from the non-tribal zones. I mean to say tribal identity means a specific language, religion, ecological zone, cultural habit or a specific mode of production. However, in spite of the fact that tribes of India represented an assortment of communities, different in size, mode of livelihood and social organization, certain features characterize almost all societies. For instance, all tribes are marked by a survival and durability of collective identities. All the tribes have generally homogeneous, undifferentiated and unstratified societies compared to the mainstream zones. I mean to say tribal societies to a greater extent are egalitarian society where you don't find in general social and economic stratification which is very explicit like the culture I mean mainstream culture. There has also been the absence of marked division of labor in tribal societies. The tribes have also had a relatively low level of technological and material base. I mean to say that in general tribal people follow very primitive lifestyle. Their technology is also primitive and their economic life can be considered as a kind of aesthetic economic system. These are some of the specific features which have shaped the formation of tribal identity in India and the world. These elements have also survived long periods of interaction with mainstreams. Tribal cultures can be understood in relationship between among different tribes and the mainstream cultural life of others. Friends, as we have learned that generally tribal societies lived in isolation and they are often identified on the basis of their distinct lifestyle. The tribes located at the periphery and not surrounded by a non-tribal presence in any proximity remained untouched by any kind of interaction with the mainland. However, you may find tribal society who have been in interaction with mainstream culture since very long time as well. But they believed in maintaining their distinguished cultural traits. Their relationship with others was marked by an almost complete isolation. We generally perceive that 
tribals are those who live in secluded areas and they follow a very distinct life system. Onge, Jarva and other indigenous tribes of the Andaman island are some of the examples of those tribes who lived thoroughly a secluded life. Various other tribes survived their basic features but incorporated some of the social practices of the mainstream cultures as a result of long period of interaction and cultural interface. For instance, it has been demonstrated by anthropologists that Baga and Khond tribes of peninsular India share the same structure of kinship as the present day Tamil Nadu, the center of an ancient civilization with one of the oldest literary languages in the world. Similarly, it has been found that many tribes of Rajasthan and Gujarat have no separate language of their own, but they speak the language of the region where they are located. These tribes obviously lost their languages and adopted the language of the region as a result of interaction with the mainstream culture. You may find people of Jharkhand mainly from different tribal communities specifically you can identify them in Cheros and Oran also Santhals who speak very good Hindi or Maghi or a local language Panchparganya. But the adoption of new language did not lead to the loss of their tribal identity. Likewise, adhering rigidity to endogamy has been a feature of almost all Indian tribes. Though it is not a universal characteristic of tribes elsewhere, endogamy is a trait which Indian tribes share with the Indian non-tribal mainland though it will be difficult to argue that this common trait has removed their differences, but it does demonstrate the interpretation of the two identities. It, another model of interaction has produced the absorption for the fusion of tribal identity into the dominant religion or culture. This has happened through the assimilation of tribes into many, the mainly the Hindu religion and has been called by anthropologists and Hindu method of tribal absorption. This was a phenomena which appeared in different regions of the country. So, India, Indian tribes should specifically be known for adopting the culture of the uh, main uh, of the different communities and this interaction played a very important role in acculturation of such tribes. The tribes affected by this form of interaction are the ones in the interior hills and the forest where the influence of civilization other than Hinduism was absent. The Bhil, Munda, Santhal, Zhuang and various other tribes fall into the category. I would like to enlighten you that many tribal kingdoms were formed in India. Gonds followed the Hindu trait of life and formed a large empire in central India. Similarly, Cheros and Karwars ruled over a large part of Bihar, Jharkhand and modern day Uttar Pradesh and they adopted all the modes of Brahmanic or the traditional way of Hindu life. This fusion took place in a variety of ways, both socio-economic and political. When the material base of a tribe was endangered because of increase in population or any other region, the tribe intended, intended to move closer to the mainstream society in proximity in order to acquire economic security. 
This often led to the placement of much tribes at the lowest rank of the caste hierarchy. However, you may find a trend that many of the tribals upgraded themselves as Kshatriyas. And this is why we have Gond Kshatriyas and also Cheros who emerge as the clan of Kshatriyas. Similarly, the adaptation of Hindu belief and practices by some tribes brought them into the orbit of Hindu order like many other social groups. Likewise, the rise of tribal dynasties to political power like the Chandela tribe invariably led to the Hinduization of the top layer of the tribesmen. This integration into Hindu order which occurred at the top also in due course of time penetrated to the bottom of the tribes. It is important to note that these absorption did not completely efface the tribal identity but altered and redefined it significantly. I would like to explain you that the mainstream culture of Hinduism itself was influenced by many of the cultic and cultural practices of different tribal, con uh, tribal communities. And we have adopted many of their modes of worship and even their gods. The formation of tribal identity has acquired a new impetus in modern times especially after 1950 when the Indian constitution was adopted. It included a list of the scheduled tribes which was revised in 1976 with the official acknowledgement provided by the constitution of India. The tribal identity has acquired a definiteness and a cohesion which it did not possess earlier. Also, the dividing line between certain tribes and caste groups which was quite blurred in the past has now become clearer. Moreover, the constitutional initiatives, the legal order and the political incentives have also helped in the renovation of all India tribal identity of various tribal groups geographically distant from one another. In other words, tribes as far as a part of Jinnaga, Baiga and Toda have now acquired a common interest in maintaining and strengthening an all India tribal and identity. Finally, there have also been attempts at a re-tribalization that is efforts at regaining the tribal identity. For example, the Mahato tribe of Chota Nagpur was classified as a tribe in 1921 but moved closer to the Hindu order and consequently got declassified in the sense of 1931. It is an interesting example, but they are again trying to get themselves classified as a tribe. Many communities in northern India are making claims that they should be treated as tribal communities. It is indeed a paradox that which with the modernization of India after independence, the proportion of tribal population to total population has gone from 5.30% in 1951 to 7.76% in 1981. Further increase in tribal population has been noted in census reports which have taken place, which have come to light in previous decades. Tribal communities perceive their identification at local or regional level that is within the existing boundary of the state union territory at the inter-regional level across the adjoining state boundaries at the national level that is over a large part of the country while a few identity themselves transnationally. This study it is important to understand the whole a holistically the entire cultural geography, geography of South Asia because the present day identity of India as a distinct geopolitical identity after 
15th August 1947 may confuse you a little. The following table clearly shows that most of the tribals identity themselves locally while few have affiliation with tribals of other regions and a very few tribe is uh, have their identity at transnational level. Tribal community also identify themselves by various markers. Each tribal community in general has one identification marker or other. Northeast India stands out in this respect compared to other India. A flag is the identification marker of Khasi, Khe, Nerian of Meghalaya, Naga, Kabui of Nagaland, the Dalua communities of Orisha, they have distinct flag markers. Central India uses tattooing more frequently as a marker. Tattooing of males is reported among Nahal of Madhya Pradesh, Gond Maria, Gond Raz Gond of Maharashtra, Naga of Nagaland, while tribal communities of Gond, Bheel, Oram, Pasi, Nahal of Maharashtra, Lavana of Odisha, etc. follow practice of tattooing. Females, Northeast India has a large number of communities with female race as their identification marker. So friends, in this particular lecture, we have tried to understand that how the formation of different tribe has taken place. Tourism uh, is an industry which is both service oriented and deals with vast number of different people and their cultural life. So for students of tourism, understanding the different cultural social groups of India, their identities, their cultural practices, their form of architecture, their cult, their dresses, their languages is remarkably significant. Thank you very much. Thank you.